Hi, I'm Tortellini. Here's the Meta News Report for Patch 7.36b. As mentioned before, all my hero guides are updated again for the 377th time with 2063 changes, one of the largest changes for the guides of all time. Anyways, let's check in on the meta weather for the top offlane position 3 core heroes to play so far in Patch 7.36b. As always, if you have any questions or need advice, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to respond. It's hard to believe that Vengeful Spirit is actually a viable offlaner considering we're mostly used to tanky, aggressive, and initiating heroes like Centaur Warrunner, Axe, or Mars. But in all honesty, this hero is the most brain dead, straightforward hero to play because her item build mostly revolves around stats and damage output. Vengeful Spirit follows a similar style as Weaver or Wraith King in terms of qualities. She has essentially two lives, thanks to her Ag Scepter, and she massively outdamages most enemies due to Vengeance Aura and her being a universal attribute hero. When you look at her Soul Strike facet, you start imagining items that could work on her as a melee hero. Battle Fury, Echo Saber, Quelling Blade, but I hate to break it to you, none of that is worth it for her. The only reason we picked the Soul Strike facet is because it lowers her BAT to 1.5. That's 0.2 less than most heroes who are at 1.7, and it's the BAT equivalent of a Wind Ranger, Morphling, or Abaddon. That BAT change is like a 15% attack speed increase, and going Butterfly lowers that BAT even more. Now, if you're way too cool to understand BAT versus attack speed and the difference, just remember this. Lower BAT means you get more value from attack speed based items like Assault Curious or Butterfly. Now, Vengeful Spirit is quite the built-up hero. The more stats you build, the stronger she is, both in her damage from being a universal attribute hero and from her Vengeance Aura. Don't forget that Wave of Terror also lowers the armor and attack damage of anyone debuffed by it. So most fights are usually in your favor both because of your damage growth over the course of the match, but also because your debuffs are perpetually strong. Wave of Terror lowers armor, which is great in the early game, when enemies have low armor and the lower attack damage percentage debuff is great late game when everyone becomes much more effective in their physical damage. So you go from a mid game ganking hero with a great initiation like nether swap and the big fat stun and nuke damage with magic missile to then crippling them with your universal attribute grown damage and armor debuff. In the late game you become this incredible double life carry like hero with a low cooldown spell and scaling talents like nearly doubling the armor reduction of enemies from your talent 15 to even more vengeance aura damage at talent 25. As for your level 20 talent, it's pretty misunderstood. It reads, Wave of Terror steals 20% of reduced damage and armor, but it's not really clear how it works. So I'll clarify how the talent actually works is that Wave of Terror grants Vengeful Spirit 20% of the affected unit's total damage and total armor which is absolutely wild and a massive late game power spike for the hero given the cooldown of Wave of Terror is only 10 seconds short. Her item build is pretty straightforward. You grab the Ag Scepter for the obvious double life and your abilities are also reset and then move on to Manta Style for the dispel, split push farm with your illusions that also gain damage from your Vengeance Aura as well as more comfortable movement speed. Lastly, Dragonlance for the range and then you go for larger stat items like Butterfly, IF Scotty, or you can even pick up a Daedalus as your damage capper to take advantage of your overall damage growth to truly hit hard late game. In terms of guide changes, I've completely revised the build from early game to your core and extension items while removing a lot of redundancies that weren't relevant to the hero anymore. Night Stalker is another hero that has grown in popularity because of his massively improved early game due to this innate ability and his facet. Now don't get me wrong, I think his blinding void facet is very good but the overall value of his night range facet is particularly smooth for Night Stalker who honestly has no presence in the early game. Night Rain starts your match at night and reduces daytime by 15 seconds while giving nighttime 15 seconds more. So when you take a look at his innate ability, Heart of Darkness, which increases your health regeneration by 40% at night, you're looking at an 8.8 .8 health regeneration when buying your two bracers for that first 5 minutes. This massively makes the laning stage all the more comfortable for Night Stalker. It also means you can start with 1 or even 2 points in Hunter the Night for more maneuverability and attack speed. Great when tag teaming with your pause 4 for quick kills during those early levels. What's really nice is that if things go the way they should, you should be hitting your Dark Ascension during daytime, which means less time spent during the day and more during the night maximizing your output and engagement tempo speed. These early minutes where there is more nighttime and less redundancy of Dark Ascension occurring during night 
means that Night Stalker comfortably grows into the mid game where his item timings like Phylactery come a bit earlier and thus you have more leeway to make an impact with more regular ganks. Night Stalker isn't the best late game hero unless he's snowballed into it so with these new facets and innate abilities it's now much easier for Night Stalker to viably fight and contribute late game. Right now Night Stalker's build is Phylactery into Blink Dagger, Ag Shard, Black King Bar and Conda. If you're really doing well, you can cut out all the nonsense and just go straight Phylactery or to Blink Dagger to Conda. The Ag Shard helps you farm to reach your large items like Black King Bar during a time when the game might be slowing down in terms of ganks. Lastly, when you're ganking, don't forget that Dark Ascension resets your abilities, so you don't have to use it to initiate unless need be. Usually when you have Blink Dagger, you can blink in, pop Void and Crippling Fear, and then use Dark Ascension to do it all over again while your Phylactery comes off cooldown. By the way, if you love my Dota guides, please like and subscribe, of course. Consider maybe becoming a member on my YouTube channel for just 3 bucks. Your support keeps the in-game guides alive for a little bit longer. In today's meta of Weaver and Lifestealer, one hero doesn't give two shits about them, Enigma. Enigma has propped up in popularity for three main reasons. One, incredible laner. Enigma and its Edelins are a menace against most supports and enemy safe laners. They out-deny and outlast hit most in the lane. They are a constant threat for anyone trying to harass Enigma, and they are constantly spawned due to the low cooldown, 34 seconds at max level, and 40 seconds minimum duration that they are alive. New Enigma players are concerned about health and mana cost to consistently summit Elens, but that is quickly dismissed when you buy his first two items, Bracer and Vladimir's Offering. Not only does Enigma, as a universal attribute hero, gain a lot of damage with those items, but the lifesteal and mana regeneration from Vladimir's Offering makes the spell practically free. Once you hit level 6, just throw your Edelins onto your target and slam down your black hole for a kill before wiping the tower. Number 2, Comfortable Farming. Both Darkseer and Enigma love the split push farm with Iron Shell and Edelins. And for Enigma, given how long these Edelins last with the ability to summon more and Enigma's level 10 talent giving them some attack speed, you can literally farm ancient camps as a group or send your Edelins on their merry way down the lane while you hunt for a kill. Not to mention that Enigma can also grab the Ag Shard for even more Edelin fun and to help you reach Enigma's expensive late game items, Octarine Core, and refresh your orb. Number 3, really good team fighter. As mentioned, in today's world of double life carries who just don't seem to die, Enigma's black hole cuts right through that and can be a menace at all points of the game. This enables matches to close out very quickly. By the way, Enigma's innate ability Gravity Well provides a nice damage reduction of 15% to allies nearby, including his Edelins. If the game does go uber late and these long lasting enemy carries like Wraith or Inertia are that problematic, Think about Enigma's Black Hole with the Ag Scepter upgrade, as that should deal a percentage of max health as damage. Same with his underrated Midnight Pulse, which does a percentage of an enemy's current health as damage. Like Enigma, Darkseer is another comfortable laner and teamfighter. His innate ability, Mental Fortitude, and his facet, Quick Wit, go hand in hand where Darkseer's intelligence cannot go lower than his strength or agility, and his attack speed increases based on how much intelligence he has. So I'm unsure if it's quite obvious yet, but what has happened to Darkseer is that his laning has gotten significantly more streamlined and less worrisome. For starters, his starting and early game items are now all strength related. That means Darkseer regenerates health better, has a larger health pool, and can hit harder because he's a universal attribute hero and because of his innate ability. His intelligence has also risen, thus more sustainable mana pool. Previously, Darkseer had to go something like a Null Talisman or Soul Ring before building his Arcane Boots. Now with Arcane Boots deriving from a Ring of Bazi and the changes made in 7.36, Darkseer can comfortably spam Iron Shell where appropriate and still have mana to spare. To add, a lot of the best Slaveling carries are melee based, making the use of Iron Shell and Darkseer's overall damage, about 90 at level 3-4, a real menace whenever they get near the lane. Combined with Surge and any opponent who's caught out trying to harass Darkseer, will find themselves very likely dead and regretting their decision. The rest of Darkseer hasn't really changed. He's still a great initiator with Vacuum and Wall Replica, and he still buys a lot of the great team fighting items like Guardian Greaves, Pipe of Insight, and even Ag Scepter to stun and disrupt key targets. In terms of guide changes, I created a Luxury Items tab and separated his extension, Prioritized Items, with Late Game Situational Items you may want to consider. 
I also adjusted his starting and early game items to include more bracers since his innate ability maximizes the value from it. Finally, Wind Ranger, like Vengeful Spirit, is another great carry hero that hasn't really changed with this patch. Her new facet, Whirlwind, is what the French called La Melde, so sticking with Tailwind is the way to go. Though, to be honest, it's not all that noticeable, and it isn't the reason the hero is very good. She's just a fantastic hero killer, and that's how she farms her gold. For someone like Vengeful Spirit, there are periods in the game where you are using your Wave of Terror and Vengeance Aura to farm camps very quickly, especially with your brand spanking new BAT. For Wind Ranger, she farms fine during slow periods of the match, but as you know, if you ever played against Wind Ranger, it's her just needing a Maelstrom and Focus Fire to destroy enemies easily that makes her so scary, and that's where she mostly makes her gold. During laning, she hits hard with two bracers and can set up chain stun kills with her position 4 and power shot nuke damage. And towards the mid to late game, she needs very few items to succeed. Glipnir, Black King Bar, and that's pretty much it. You can use the Glipnir to pin enemies from afar and then follow that up with a good shackle shot to chain stun them as you lay down your focus fire with Wind Run. Next, you can build more damage like Daedalus or MKB, or you can opt for more safety when solo killing foes with Aghanim Scepter's invisibility. All in all, a very safe and stable pick if you're just jumping into the new patch, naked and alone. She plays well even as a pause to mid laner and she should be familiar to play for anyone who is looking for a safe place to start in patch 7.36. In terms of honorable mentions, I think Underlord is also popular now that he starts with a free level of Atrophy Aura, giving him free last hits as the lane progresses. And the facet Fiend's Gate now creates Necromonicon units which he combos with Rod of Atos to catch enemies, Rod of Atos them to then chain root them with Pit of Malice as your Necro units go to town on their ass. I also like Brewmaster, hasn't really changed with the Radiance Rush and great crowd control that just Cyclones annoying carries and screws with the rest of the team of the enemy side. And Axe is always a popular pup stopping hero to play with one man army, literally giving him so much life and damage when mid game ganking. He's just been nerfed in this recent patch. That's it for me. I'm Totalini. Stay tuned this week for more top 5 for mid lane support and more. I'm also on Twitch continuing to test all your favorite builds every day. Hero build changes are not final and will be evolving as the meta develops. Check in game for the latest versions and don't forget to support me by subscribing, liking, giving me money, all that shit. Bye.